A lever is a tool which transfers or modifies a force, making jobs possible that couldn't be accomplished with simple brute strength. In this illustration, the downward force at point A changed to a more powerful upward force at point B through the use of a lever. This program is the first of a two-part series covering basic levers and lever systems. It is divided into three sections. First, an introduction to levers, including definition of terms, parts of levers, and their functions. Next, lever multiples, what they are, what purpose they serve, and how to determine them. And last, classes of levers. The crowbar is only one of many kinds of levers. The seesaw, the wheelbarrow, the beam in a motor truck scale, all are levers. All levers have three points in common. The load point, the fulcrum point, and the power point. The fulcrum point is the point which supports the lever. Here the fulcrum point is the log which supports the crowbar. Here, the fulcrum point is the wheel, which supports the wheelbarrow. And here, the fulcrum point rests on a stand and supports the scale lever. Fulcrum point is abbreviated FP. The point where a load or force bears on a lever is called the load point. Here, the rock is the load. Here, the material in the wheelbarrow is the load. And here, the load point receives the load applied to the scale. Load point is abbreviated LP. The third point on a lever is the power point, the spot where a force is applied to move the load. On the wheelbarrow, the power point is the handles. The power point can also be the point at which the force of the load is transferred elsewhere as in this motor truck scale. Power point is abbreviated PP. Every lever then has three points in common. The load point, abbreviated LP, the fulcrum point, abbreviated FP, and the power point, abbreviated PP. In addition, all levers have two sections, a load arm and a power arm. The load arm is the distance from the fulcrum point to the load point. So in this example, the load arm is the distance from the rock to the block. The fulcrum point is the wheel, and the load point the center of the load. So the load arm is the distance from the wheel to the center of the load. In this truck scale main lever, the fulcrum point is the stand and the load point, the center of the load. So, the load arm is the distance between the fulcrum point and the load point. Load arm is abbreviated LA. The power arm is the distance from the fulcrum point to the power point. On the wheelbarrow, the fulcrum point is the wheel, and the power point, the handle. That makes the power arm the distance between the wheel and the handles. In this main lever, the fulcrum point is the point where the lever rests on the stand, and the power point is at the tip of the lever, where the force is transferred to another part of the scale. So, the power arm is the distance from the fulcrum point on the stand to the power point at the tip of the lever. Power arm is abbreviated PA. The load arm is always the distance between the fulcrum point and the load point, regardless of where they are located on the lever. The power arm is always the distance between the fulcrum point and the power point, regardless of where they are located on the lever. How long is the power arm in this lever? Remember that the power arm is always the distance between the fulcrum point and the power point. So, 
The power arm here is 9 inches. How long is the load arm in this lever? The load arm is always the distance between the load point and the fulcrum point. So the load arm here is 7 inches. Now, stop the tape and do the exercises in section 1 of your workbook to review the information we've covered so far. A lever can do three jobs relative to the force applied. A lever can transfer the force evenly, multiply the force applied, or reduce the force applied. You can determine a particular lever's function using its ratio or multiple. The ratio of a lever is a comparison of the power arm to the load arm. Here is a lever with a power arm of 10 inches and a load arm of 10 inches. The ratio of this lever then is the power arm, 10 inches, over the load arm, also 10 inches, which reduces to a ratio of 1 to 1. The ratio of this lever with a power arm of 5 inches and a load arm of 10 inches is 5 inches to 10 inches, which reduces to a ratio of 1 to 2. What is the ratio of this lever? With a power arm of 6 inches and a load arm of 3 inches, the ratio is 6 over 3, or 2 to 1. Use the ratio of a lever to find its multiple, abbreviated M. If a lever has a ratio of 2 to 1, we say it has a ratio of 2 divided by 1, or a multiple of 2. What would be the multiple of a lever with a power arm of 4 inches and a load arm of 8 inches? Such a lever would have a ratio of 4 divided by 8, or 1 divided by 2, and a multiple of 0.5, or 1 half. Now stop the tape and do the exercises in section 2 of your workbook to review ratio and multiple. Why bother with all this math? Remember that you can use a lever's multiple to determine the function a lever serves. If a lever has a ratio of 1 to 1, we say it has a ratio of 1 divided by 1, or a multiple of 1. A multiple of 1 means that 1 times the pressure applied will be transferred. So a lever with a multiple of 1 does not change the amount of force, only the direction in which the force goes. In other words, a 100-pound rock will require 100 pounds of force to balance it. Obviously, this isn't always ideal for the job at hand. Shift the fulcrum point, though, and things will change, including the multiple. Because shifting the fulcrum point changes the relationship between the power arm and the load arm. For example, a lever with a power arm of 20 inches and a load arm of 10 inches has a multiple of 2. A multiple of 2 means that for a specific force applied to the lever, 2 times that force will be transferred through the lever. Therefore, a lever with a multiple greater than 1, that is, a lever with a power arm longer than a load arm, not only transfers the applied force, but also increases that force. Obviously, a handy thing to be able to do. What happens if we move the fulcrum point the other way and make the power arm shorter than the load arm? A lever with a power arm of 10 inches and a load arm of 20 inches has a ratio of 1 divided by 2 and a multiple of 0.5 or 1 half. A multiple of 1 half means that for a specific amount of force applied, 
only one half that force will be transferred through the lever. So a lever with a multiple less than one, that is a lever with a power arm shorter than a load arm, transfers the applied force and also reduces it. Ratios and multiples are important in understanding how levers work. So let's whip through that again briefly. The multiple of a lever is the ratio of the power arm to the load arm. The multiple is important because it indicates what happens to the force applied to a lever, as indicated by the lever's multiple. In a lever with a multiple of one, the power arm and the load arm are equal. Such a lever doesn't change the amount of force applied. It transfers force evenly from one end of the lever to the other. So a lever with a multiple of one is called an even arm lever. A lever with a multiple greater than one has a power arm longer than the load arm. It multiplies the force applied, so it is called a multiplying lever. A lever with a multiple less than one has a power arm shorter than the load arm. It reduces the force applied, so it is called a reducing lever. Now, stop the tape and do the exercises in section three. Levers are divided into three types or classes. First class, second class, and third class. The class of a lever is determined by the placement of its power point, fulcrum point, and load point. In a first class lever, the fulcrum point is between the power point and the load point. A first class lever can be an even arm lever, a multiplying lever, or a reducing lever. Depending upon where along the beam the fulcrum point appears and the resulting relationship between the power arm and the load arm. A second class lever has the load point between the fulcrum and the power point. A wheelbarrow is a good example of a second class lever. Since the load point is between the fulcrum point and the power point, the power arm of a second class lever will always be longer than the load arm. Which means that a second class lever will always have a multiple greater than one. So by definition, a second class lever can only serve one function. A second class lever can only be a multiplying lever. A third class lever has the power point between the fulcrum point and the load point. A fishing rod is an example of a third class lever. Since the power point is between the fulcrum point and the load point, the power arm of a third class lever will always be shorter than the load arm, which means that a third class lever will always have a multiple less than one. So, by definition, a third class lever can only serve one function. A third class lever can only be a reducing lever. Now, stop the tape and do the exercises in section four. You have now completed part one of basic levers. For an explanation of compound levers and lever systems, see basic levers part two.